All right. Uh, good evening. My name is Julie Lawson. I live in Foggy Bottom. I'm a Board 2 resident and business owner. I'm speaking today as the chair of the Washington, D.C. chapter of the Surfrider Foundation. It's an environmental organization that works to protect oceans, waves, and beaches through 90 chapters around the world. Our chapter strongly supports the Anacostia River Cleanup and Protection Act. We have over 800 volunteer members in the D.C. metro area with a heavy concentration in wards 1, 2, 3, and 6. More than 50 of our members have signed the Greater Greater Washington petition or submitted postcards. More than a dozen of us have volunteered to support the bill. On Sunday, several of us stood outside an Adams Morgan grocery store and talked to shoppers coming and going about the bill and encouraging them to support the bill by signing these postcards. We collected 275 in five hours from supportive citizens. Even the store's staff came out to sign them. We delivered them to Chairman Gray's office on Monday. Of all the people we talked to, only one was explicitly opposed to the bill. Several of our members are here tonight, too. Our organization works to protect water resources for recreation. One of our most frequent activities is cleanups, both locally at the rivers and at the beach. We hold cleanups year-round, averaging once a month. Anywhere from half a dozen to 50 people show up. We've been conducting these cleanups for over a decade. At a cleanup on February 16th, we collected over 400 plastic bags from the banks of the Potomac at Roosevelt Island. Par approximately 50 people volunteered, 10 from Surfrider and 40 from a corporate partner, Accenture. Many of the Accenture employees had never participated in a cleanup before, and they were astonished and appalled by the literal ton of trash that they had plucked from the riverbank in just two hours. Obviously, the Anacostia is in a much more critical situation. At another cleanup at Pope Branch on January 19th, our volunteers found that they could simply sit in the brambles and fill their bag just with the trash within the arm's reach, fill an entire trash bag. I've done a lot of river cleanups. This was like nothing I had ever seen. The cans, bags, bottles, clothing, newspapers, packaging, and other debris that were carelessly thrown from car windows on Minnesota Avenue Northeast were purposely dumped in the ravine, created an unsightly mess. It was only because it hadn't yet reached the river that we could see all of it. Our members also include rowers who have seen bottles, cans, televisions, and traffic cones, as well as shopping bags in the Anacostia, and their oars clank against the trash. Of course, the trash problem in our rivers is much larger than shopping bags, and I really welcome the opportunity to discuss additional solutions the city can take in addressing it, but this legislation is a step in the right direction. Much has been made about the economic effect this bill would have on residents in our city, but this bill is not about penalties, it's about changing behaviors. Ideally, the income from this program would actually decrease quickly as shoppers make a habit of reusing bags. This fund will make free and low-cost reusable bags plentiful and readily available to those who need assistance, and even the bags that are subject to the fee can be reused several times. It's a matter of remembering to bring a bag or not taking a new one if it's not needed, not a matter of cost. We suggest to our members, write, bring grocery bag on top of your grocery list, and you'll remember. These adjustments are easy for people in all wards and all circumstances and are a necessary step in restoring. And thank you, and we support the bill. <laughs> thank you for your testimony.